Hi, we're going to talk about sumps for a little bit here. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, sumps are a huge source of radon in a home. Uh, they must be sealed in order to properly do a radon system. And above and beyond that, uh, also your, your largest liability. Because when you start sealing that sump, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're messing with the ability to flood a basement. So it's important that, uh, that uh, you know a lot about sumps. And I think to further complicate things, each and every home is different. So uh, teaching people how to seal a sump is a very difficult uh, job uh, simply because each and every home has a different scenario that you have to deal with. And so this is typically a sump basin. This is what you're going to have in the floor. The pump's going to sit inside of it. You're, you're typically only going to see this portion uh, it, it, that will be at concrete level. And so we have this here that represents the top of the concrete and your basin would be down in it. So as I said, each and every uh, house has a different scenario that you have to deal with. And so there's a lot of different products that can help you. Uh, and i also say that sumps can be so, uh, uh, so time consuming that uh, there are certainly times that sealing the sump takes more time than even doing the radon mitigation system. But it's important that you don't hurry that process. And so typically uh, this would be our go-to uh, sump lid that we would use in most instances uh, if it's not, if it doesn't have some unusual uh, 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 circumstances involved, uh, you'll find uh, this to be very handy. We, we like the gaskets. Uh, the reason we like gaskets is it's easier to, to take apart for servicing later when the homeowner or the plumber has a has the need to replace or service a sump. These type of gaskets are handy. This would be the discharge pipe gasket. This would be, of course, the electrical cord gasket. Uh, this, this particular lid we use all the time also. We're big fans of a viewport. So this is a viewport. Uh, the big advantage to the viewport is that uh, we always tell the consumer, you need to monitor your own sump. A sump is a mechanical item that can cause a lot of damage to your basement. This makes it extremely easy to monitor. In other words, even in my own uh, uh, sump basin, I have one of these. You simply pull it out, as I just did, to check your sump anytime you want to. You end up with a five inch hole that you can shine a flashlight down. Uh, and make sure that uh, that your sump is running as it should. And oftentimes, uh, I, I tell people, you know, do it before a storm, do it after a storm. But it it, it pays because uh, once you've had a flooded basement, uh, you understand uh, how discouraging that can be. And so this is a uh, typical of what we try to do in most homes. But then you run into the challenges I spoke about. So uh, also. Uh, after this is installed, you want to use clear silicone uh, to go around the edge because the silicone is not considered a permanent caulk, so it's relatively easy for that plumber or homeowner to remove that lid. So some of the other things that you, you get into in the more complicated uh, uh, situations, for instance, this is an oversized lid. It happens to be a clear lid also, which is a choice of some people, but sometimes you simply need something bigger, uh, depending on the environment around a sump basin. Uh, could have to do with the concrete, could be an unusual size of uh, sump basin. Another example of a sump lid is occasionally you just have enough stuff sticking up higher than the concrete that a uh, dome lid would come in handy. So this is an example of a domed lid That'll, that gets you four inches of height that could come in handy. Once again, it's just another example of something that you can use in unique situations. Also, uh, this is uh, something that we occasionally use. You just get into some situations where you've got so much going on above the concrete level that you wish you had a way to put your sump lid higher. And so, uh, so you, can, you can also raise your sump lid by doing this. Uh, and we, we actually term this as a riser. Another thing we do that might be a benefit to you is oftentimes, or at least occasionally, you'll find that the concrete around a sump basin is in such bad shape that you have trouble sealing your lid. If you're going to put a lid such as this 
around a sump basin and it happens to be very awkwardly uh, uh, poured concrete around it, it's, it's extremely hard to seal. And so oftentimes, this is treated plywood, three quarter inch thick, very simple donut ring we call it. We install this permanently to the floor to, in order to get us to get us a more level surface to mount this to. Now, when you use the word permanent, you're also going to use a permanent caulk. And so as you can see, if you mount this to the floor, you're able to take up the unevenness with a permanent caulk and with uh, permanent screws into the concrete. And then you once again create a surface that you can seal to. And then, then when you seal it, of course, you're going to run the non-permanent silicone caulk around it. But actually, these come in very handy for us because it's, un, it's, uh, it's sort of uh, unusual how many times you find the concrete around a sump uh, in poor condition. So that's just some of the hints about, uh, about the different scenarios you're going to find when you're doing sump basins. But I want to stress the fact that they are your highest liability uh, issue with a radon system, also the biggest contributors to radon uh, uh, in homes. And they're such a liability issue that we highly recommend literature uh, to warn people and to, and to notify people. Uh, <coughs> it is a mechanical item. Uh, we always put a label on the sump identifying as part of radon system because uh, as part of a radon system, we want to warn the plumber or the um, uh, or the homeowner, if they're going to access that sump for service, we sure want you to understand it's got to go back the way it was or you're going to affect the uh, integrity of a radon system. Another thing that we're keen on is we tie one of these to each, to each pipe and it's simply a label that tells the homeowner this. It says, uh, we've made sure the seals are secure. Uh, we also know that you need to put this back in good working order and that uh, uh, and you need to inspect this once once in a while yourself because it is a mechanical item it's important that you keep an eye on it also uh, another thing we do is you'd be amazed how easy it is to walk away from a sump and leave it unplugged is one of the uh, is one of the things that can happen easier than you think as well as something not functioning quite right. And so we also have a checkoff list. You have to have at least two people, of course, if you're gonna have a checkoff list, but we have one person that installs the lid around a sump. A second person comes back and initials verifying that everything is working properly. For instance, uh, we wanna know that the sump's in good running condition. Both people verify that. We wanna make sure the float is operating properly. Both people identify that. Viewports installed, uh, once again, that's an option. We wanna make sure all the bands are tightened on, uh, on things like uh, fern coats and on floats. I'm sorry, on uh, um, seals. We, and we wanna make sure it's plugged in, very important. But the fact that we have a second person uh, checking the first person's work and uh, initialing to verify it is, is a, is a, uh, makes us feel a lot more comfortable. If we're there and the consumer is around, we encourage them to uh, also be involved in this checkoff list. And it also uh, is a good way of informing the consumer how important it is that they keep an eye on it uh, as time goes by too, because once again, it is a mechanical item that, uh, that does have a lifespan. Typically, when we enter a home that was built after 1980 in this region, we always look for what I'm pointing at right now. Uh, this hole uh, is typically made in homes by the plumber for future bathtub use. You have a vent stack here. In other words, during the process of, uh, of building a home in the early stages, it's determined where, where that would be the best place to put a future bathroom. And it's a selling point for the plumber and the builder to say, we're roughed in is the word they use. We're roughed in for a future uh, bathroom. The reason the hole exists is if a bathtub's put in, the plumbing needs to be deeper than the floor itself. And so the plumber uh, thinks he's gonna save himself a lot of labor of tearing up a floor, and he's right, if a bathtub's put in. The problem is it's a huge source of radon. So we always look for it. 
I always like to tell the homeowner a couple things about it. First of all, this, this forming or framing that held the concrete from going in the hole is typically just lumber that's laying around and not treated. Because it's not treated and it touches open earth, we want to remove it. We don't want any chance of termites getting into that lumber. So we remove this and then we cover the hole with, uh, with a treated plywood or a plastic product that seals it from radon entry. If the plumber in the future does want to, uh, if the homeowner wants to have the plumber put a uh, bathtub in, they can sure do it. We sort of put a warning label underneath this, uh, this cover so that the plumber uh, hopefully will call us because we still want to ensure that this is not a problem with the radon system. We can cure the radon today, but, but these, kind of, uh, these kind of problems can create radon issues later. So um, this is important to point out and it's important to fix in order to have a, an effective radon system. So uh, earlier David Smith was explaining that we try not to leave the wood exposed underneath the shower cutouts and tub cutouts because it is a potential termite source. Uh, when I pulled these out they are actually soft to the touch so water has been soaking into this making it an ideal termite environment. So it's a good thing that we took this out of here. What I did was I created a cover out of some black plastic sump material that I had on our trailer. I've secured it down to the floor with tap cotton screws. And then I secured around the perimeter of it, sealed it with silicone caulk. And I've set it up this way so that if somebody were to decide down the road that they want to put a tub or a shower down here, this is very easy for a plumber to remove. It's just a matter of removing the screws and popping the seal and it'll be good to go.